In this two-part video, we are going to take a close look at the latest developments in the realm of computer use agents. Computer use agents are exactly what you think they would be. They allow multimodal transformers like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet or GPT-4.0 to execute actions on your computer in the same manner you would. The multimodal aspect is key as they rely on taking screenshots to deduce context in addition to deducing context from the usual format of text. My goal is to leave you with a deep understanding of how these agents work and highlight some of the challenges they present. In part one, we are going to show how to run a computer use agent in a Docker container. Part one's content should apply to pretty much everybody as Docker containers are supported on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And in part two, we are going to show how to run a computer use agent directly on a Mac. General concepts demoed in part two will apply to Windows and Linux users, but let's be real, part two's content is gonna be of particular interest to those who use Mac-based machines. As I've not tested a particular Windows or Linux computer use agent implementation, I cannot safely recommend one at this time. Along the way, we're also going to show how to set up these agents for monitoring using a tool called AgentOps. The only prereqs you'll need to follow along are A, a laptop or desktop, B, Docker, C, VS Code, D, familiarity with Git, E, an Anthropic API key, and F, an AgentOps API key. You can get Docker by coming over to www.docker.com and then downloading and installing the appropriate version for your machine. This should be pretty painless. Leave a comment if you have an issue installing Docker. You can get VS Code by coming over to code.visualstudio.com and then downloading and installing the appropriate version for your machine. Likewise, this should be pretty painless. Leave a comment if you have an issue installing VS Code. Git is a free software for sharing and editing code with others on the internet, and you can install Git a number of ways. For example, you can come over to git-scm.com slash downloads and install the appropriate version for your machine. We will be using Git to clone or download a copy of the code that will power our computer use agents from GitHub. The process for getting an Anthropic API key is very similar to how you would provision an OpenAI API key. Come over to console.anthropic.com and sign up, purchase credits, and provision an API key. Just like OpenAI, Anthropic's pricing model is usage-based like a gas station, so you will need credits. You can start with whatever the minimum allowed amount is and always purchase more credits later if needed. To get an AgentOps API key, come over to app.agentops.ai and sign up. Then come over to the API key section and copy the default key or create a new product to provision a non-default API key for organizational purposes if you like. That takes care of all the prereqs for part one if you want to try out this containerized computer use agent stuff for yourself. For the Mac users watching, I'm pretty sure you're excited to get to part two, but I highly recommend you watch part one before watching part two for additional context. Part two is going to be simpler to set up than part one, but it comes with a trade-off of increased risk to your personal data being either damaged or exposed, depending on what you ask the agent to do. Here is a diagram showing how to set up a containerized computer use agent. The benefit of running a computer use agent inside of a container is that it adds a layer of protection for the data that sits on our base machine. Yes, this is not foolproof. There are crazy hacks that can cause the software running in the container to affect data on the base machine, but the whole premise and design of what a container is and does is intended to isolate whatever software runs inside of the container from the base machine itself. To make this a bit more practical, if there is some data that sits on our machine that we'd like the computer use agent that we run to access or work with, we'll need to explicitly copy that data into the container so that the agent can work with and access it. To give another analogy, running a computer use agent inside of a container is sort of like putting a dog inside of a pen. Yes, the dog can get over, under, around through the pen. The whole purpose of the pen though is to confine the dog or to limit the blast radius of how the dog can affect the surrounding environment. The combined approach of being very thoughtful about the tasks that you assign to your computer use agents, along with running them in isolated or containerized or virtualized environments, sums up the general approach being presented here in part one for how to run these types of agents with respect to data privacy and protection. Okay, let's give this containerized computer use agent stuff a spin. Anthropic's original computer use implementation can be found at this URL. Inside of this repo, there's a number of example projects. This is the one that we want. Let's click into it. And let's take a moment to read through this cautionary message that welcomes us. Computer use is a beta feature. Please be aware that computer use poses unique risks that are distinct from standard API features. To minimize risks, consider one, 
using a dedicated virtual machine or container. Two, avoid giving the model access to sensitive data. Three, limit internet access to a white list of domains. And four, ask a human to confirm decisions that may result in meaningful real world consequences. In some circumstances, cloud will follow commands found in content, even if it conflicts with the user's instructions. For example, instructions on web pages may override user instructions or cause cloud to make mistakes. Okay, that was not reassuring at all, but let's move forward anyways. Let's clone that Anthropic Quick Starts repo onto our machine. And let's enter the cloned or copied project that we downloaded from GitHub. And here we see all of the projects. Let's enter the computer use demo project and open it with VS Code. In this project, we see a setup.sh script and let's run that. Here you can see this script is confirming we have Python and cargo installed and it's going to set up a virtual environment for us and download all of the dependencies that this product needs, etc. So let me be quiet and let's just run this. All right. So the setup script finished. And next up, we have to build the Docker image that's going to power our computer use agent. Hopefully you're familiar with Docker lingo. So Docker file is to image is to container as recipe is to frozen food is to meal as blueprint is to manufacture good is to purchase good sort of abstract, but that's how it works. Docker file image container. Anyways, next up we will set our anthropic API key. I will Censor this so I don't expose my key. Clear the terminal. And now we can run our Docker container that will power our computer use agent. Here we see the computer use agent booting up. And we see it's ready for us to load. And here we see the same image that we saw on the architecture diagram of how to set up a computer use agent in a Docker container. Here is a simple web application that consists of two panels. You see this left panel and this right panel. The left panel holds an iframe powering a little chat application for interacting with our computer use agent. And on the right is the desktop GUI of the computer that the agent is controlling. So if I say, for example, hello, right, we see the agent taking screenshots of the machine. And let's try this out now. Open the calculator and add two plus two. Right, that's pretty incredible, right? So. Next up, let's show how to copy data on our base machine into the container so that we can do some more practical work. Okay, here's the technique. So we are going to mount a folder in our project into a folder in the container. And whatever files or data we add to this folder will be visible to the agent in the container. So for demonstration purposes, I am going to add this service agreement contract that I've used a few times over the past year or two. It comes from Liam Otley. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's a YouTuber as well. And what usually happens is a prospective client will come into my pipeline and I'll need to draft a proposal for them and customize a template. And let's see if the computer use agent can do this work instead of me doing it. So we've created the 
scratch folder and this is how we mount it to the container. The computer use agent has rebooted and here's the prompt that we're going to send to have our agent customize this service agreement template for us. Right, and you can see the agent has extracted the text from this PDF document. All right, so it extracted the text and it modified the service agreement with the information I provided. And in the prompt, I requested the final document to be a PDF. So let's see if it does that part two. All right, eventually it got pretty much there. It's not the best looking agreement. The original one is formatted much more nicely. But you got to feel for how this works. Now we're going to add in agent ops and rerun this PDF customization request to confirm everything regarding our agent's activity is being monitored appropriately. Okay, to do this, first we come over to the requirements.txt file in the computer underscore use underscore demo folder and add another dependency that reads like this. Agent ops is still testing this computer use agent tracking feature. That's why we have to import this special unreleased version that was authored by TOCNS, AKA Romanian Raiden or Romanian Raiden, however you want to pronounce it. If and when this is released, you'll simply import it like this. But for now, we have to go with this. The next thing that we have to do is come over to the streamlit.py file and initialize agent ops to track all of the LLM calls our application makes. And now we can build our image again. And now we have to set our agent ops API key as a shell variable. This is the API key that you copied from the agent ops console. And now we can run our computer use agent again with this command and make sure you reference the agent ops API key. Okay, the computer use agent has rebooted and we see agent ops appears to be working. And now if we send our agreement customization prompt, let's see if agent ops is indeed tracking all of the agent's activity. Okay, so monitoring is set up and this is an advisable way to use this system so that you can audit what it does and you know make sure you have a personal track of everything that it's doing in case it goes off the rails, so to speak. We are now going to skirt cautiously on the edge of Pandora's box-like territory. We are going to run a computer use agent directly on a Mac. While Anthropic's original implementation was designed to run the agent on an Ubuntu machine within a container, a rather creative and exceptional fellow by the name of Didi forked or customized this original implementation so that the agent runs directly in Mac-based environments. Here is a diagram outlining the design of this Mac computer use agent, and immediately we can see that it's simpler than the original containerized computer use implementation that Anthropic published. Keep in mind that this Mac computer use agent implementation will periodically take screenshots of your monitor and other snapshots of your machine for upload to AWS and Google Cloud, as that's where I understand Anthropic models are currently hosted. After this data is uploaded to these clouds, it will be ran through multiple layers of processing and analysis, the exact details of which are not publicly known. 
Secondly, due to the probabilistic nature of how multimodal transformers work, they by their very nature are capable of doing unexpected things, which in the realm of personal data is not that reassuring. Let's say, for example, that for maybe prompt injection reasons, one of the models you're using were to edit or delete sensitive data on your computer. This would be disastrous if backups were never taken. Thirdly, there is the fundamental concern that we are literally handing over control of our computer to another entity. Yes, there are already many ways that big tech players and government actors are monitoring and restricting our personal computer usage, but this setup makes it explicit. You're literally handing over control to another entity. At the very least, what you should do is make sure that the prompts you send to your computer use agents include human in the loop steps so that you stay involved at key points in the tasks that you're assigning to them. That's the very least you can do. In order to make sure this doesn't have unintended consequences, you'll probably need additional layers of protection like virtualization, you know, firewalls. Moving on. Now let's take this Mac computer use agent for a spin. DD's Mac computer use implementation can be found at this URL. And let's clone this project onto our computer. and enter the project and open it with VS Code. And then there is this setup.sh script that's going to install all the requirements we need to run this application on our computer for us. So let's run it. And then let's create a .env file with these variables. And next up, we want to activate our virtual environment. And you can see our environment is activated by this change in the prompt. I'm surprised it's not set up out of the box for us, but we have to rename this streamlit.py file to be called streamlit underscore app.py. Maybe try running it as is. See if it works for you, but for me, I have to rename it. And then when I run this application with this command, it hopefully should work. And it looks like it does. Let's run a quick smoke test. Write the text hello to a new file called hello.txt on A's desktop. A is the Mac user running this prompt. Voila. See that? Hello. So let's immediately stop this nonsense and shut this down. I'm pretty sure on this channel, that's as far as we're ever going to go on this direct host-based computer use agent setup stuff. In conclusion, computer use agents are an amazing innovation, but I'd highly advise against using them without thoroughly assessing potential consequences. The trickiest thing about them is that they can perform undesired actions even after being explicitly configured to not do so. If you'd still like to experiment with them, however, here is the list of precautions to take as a starting point. If you'd like to experiment with developing the source code of a computer use agent, here is a fork of the original Anthropic implementation that I'm particularly fond of. It was authored by TOCNS, AKA Romanian Raiden, and it features out-of-the-box breakpoint debugging and a more streamlined project setup. As a challenge to the community, one thing I'd love to see integrated into this fork would be the use of an open-source multimodal model, like for example, Llama 3.2 Multimodal 90B. Using a locally hosted model for powering a computer use agent is going to be a huge step up from a data protection standpoint. Finally, in the description for this video, you should see a links section. I've included the links for downloading Git, Docker, and VS Code. I've also included the links for signing up to Anthropic and Agent Ops. Plus, I've included a link for buying me a metaphorical coffee, and I've included an affiliate link for buying this yoga ball. Useful for stretching, for bouncing, for exercise, etc. Wishing us all the highest of blessings.